For years, elite athletes have been looking towards altitude training as an additional way to improve their performance on race day. However, many people now claim that you can get the same benefits or very similar benefits at sea level using one of these. An altitude mask. That was an altitude mask or an elevation mask. But do they really work? Now I do apologize because I'm going to go straight in on the science here, so do bear with me. Altitude training is training around 1500 meters above sea level and above that obviously, but preferably more in the region of 2400 meters and above for maximum benefit and adaptation. And the reason that so many athletes go to do altitude training is that it's been proven to improve your VO2 max. That is how much oxygen your body can process during intense exercise. And as you'll all be aware, I'm sure, that as you go up in altitude, there is less oxygen available to us. And this is where the improvements come from because due to this limit and lack of oxygen during exercise, our muscle tissues go into a state of hypoxia. Hypoxia being where the demand for oxygen for the muscle tissues exceeds the supply. Our body's response to this is to overcompensate in the production of red blood cells and therefore improving our VO2 max. Are you still with me? Good. Well, altitude masks restrict your breathing when you inhale, therefore simulating the effects of altitude, forcing your body to adapt to produce more red blood cells, yada, yada, yada. You get the picture. At least that's the theory. Well, I've got myself an altitude mask here and I've decided I'm gonna dig a little deeper today, including testing it out. Right then, so I've popped onto the canal path here and I thought, first things first, probably a good idea just to head out and get to grips with this altitude mask. So I'm just gonna head for a gen gentle jog, try the altitude mask on, see how it affects my training. I've currently got it set to apparently 12,000 feet in altitude. That's by just simply changing out some of the lugs and valves on this. So let's see how it goes. Now one thing to think about before you do any training of this sort is that due to its restrictive breathing, wearing an altitude mask might cause you to hyperventilate or faint. So if you do have high blood pressure or other cardiovascular problems, then it may be sensible to avoid this or at the very least seek medical advice. That was definitely different and certainly a lot harder. I think I've got my head around it now. So I'm gonna up the ante here now. I'm gonna do two runs at a moderate pace, which is around maybe four minute per kilometer for myself. I'm gonna do one wearing the mask and then one not wearing the mask. Now, I'm actually gonna measure my heart rate for this. The general idea is that by wearing the mask, I'm gonna be working harder and I'm gonna see that through an increased heart rate. And then hopefully that will mean that my body is adapting due to having to work harder. That's the theory. Let's give it a go. Feel so short of breath, almost my prevent I do. I can't get enough to my muscles. Ah. Oh. Heart rate's above 170. Aye, aye, aye. Oh my goodness, that's the first 20 done with the mask. I went a little bit faster than four minute per kilometer, it was around 357 per kilometer. So just over 5K, um, I'll try and hit that next time. But yeah, average heart rate of 165. That was higher than I expect for that kind of pace. But hey, that was, that was difficult. I really felt short of breath, almost like I was hyperventilating, almost felt like I was gonna panic at the end. Um, now let's take a nice a long rest and do the same again without the mask. Hi. 
I can breathe again. Hey, this is so much nicer. Actually finding myself running a little bit too fast in places, just trying to hold myself back. That's how much easier it feels. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's both done there. Um, without the mask, same pace, a second slower per kilometer, 358. Um, but heart rate was a whole, well, 10 beats below almost, 157 average. Um, and considering I did this one second, so you could argue perhaps my heart rate would still stay, stay high from the first one. Um, I think that has clearly shown how much harder it is with a mask versus without the, with the mask was just, horrific. I mean, my head was hurting. I just felt, as you should, like short of breath and I just couldn't supply my muscles with the oxygen they needed. They were starting to feel really horrible, really heavy, um, and really tight actually. Um, and just almost like I was getting to the point like as if I'd just done a hundred meter flat out sprint. So I was pleased to get that one out of the way and finished. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go rest now. Okay, thinking back on my runs there, this mask definitely made a difference. There's no question about that. I was having to work harder when I had the mask on. The idea behind them does make sense, but the question does still remain, do they have the same effect as training at altitude? Well, I've done a little bit of digging around here and reading up of some scientific studies and experiments out there, and there seems to be several key themes here. So first off, Many of these masks do not have the sufficient mechanisms to actually decrease the oxygen content in the air as you would experience at altitude. Therefore, they're not going to be able to recreate the exact training effect gained at altitude. They restrict the amount of air that you can pull into your lungs, but not the oxygen content of that air. So you receive less oxygen, but only because you're receiving less air. And that is the crucial difference. So to stress this actually slightly further, I guess, there's some very sophisticated laboratories out there, training centers, or what we often call altitude chambers that will extract oxygen from the air. So when you take a full breath in, when you're in one of these altitude chambers, there is simply less oxygen. So essentially, or exactly replicating true altitude, which is great technology, but that does not exist in these. So what these studies do show is that these masks create air resistance, which directly stresses our breathing muscles. So they kind of act more like a tool for respiratory muscle training rather than hypoxia, which we experience through altitude training that leads to that increase in red blood cell count. Now respiratory muscle training, or RMT as it's often referred to, is very different from altitude training. It does have some benefits in that it can help to reduce lactic acid or the effect of lactic acid during intense exercise, or even that perception of respiratory effort, which can lead to improved and enhanced performance. However, there are very few studies out there that prove this RMT, and they're quite vague to be honest. Whereas there's several studies that show that an improvement in RMT does not link to an improved VO2 max. So as I mentioned earlier, when I did my run using the altitude mask, it was clearly a lot harder. It definitely had an effect on my ability to breathe effectively. But as these studies are quite clearly showing, that doesn't necessarily mean or transfer over to an improvement in my performance or my VO2 max. And there's more. Altitude masks have been shown to cause some arterial hypoxia, which is what we see at altitude. But again, it is a different way to true altitude training. The mass causes poor ventilation, resulting in an imbalance between oxygen uptake and CO2 removal. This can lead to hyperventilation and an increase in perceived effort of training. Studies have been shown that when using the mass to try and increase an individual's VO2 max, results have been quite inconclusive. And that would explain why I found it harder to run with the mask and I saw this increase in my heart rate. Unfortunately though, and what this evidence is showing, I don't think altitude masks or altitude masks are ever going to replace true real altitude training. But I think we probably all sort of had an inkling that was the case. However, these masks can be used as a good tool for respiratory muscle training. 
And again, as I mentioned earlier, this improved respiratory muscle strength can lead to improved performance, but not necessarily improved VO2 max. And finally, just to round this video out, just quickly, I've got a couple more issues with regards to using the mass for altitude training. And this starts with the popular mantra, live high, train low. You may have heard this before, with regards to how a lot of pro athletes will live at altitude, they'll spend a majority of their time at altitude, sleep at altitude, and they'll come down in altitude, sometimes down to sea level to do their training. Now, training at altitude, is obviously hard. It puts a lot of stress on the body. We can't necessarily power the same power on the bike, same speeds when we run. So we're not gonna get the same muscular adaptations. Also, to get the benefit and the effect of altitude, you need to be spending a lot of time at it. Putting a mask on for a rather short and intermittent period of time is not going to have the same effect. So there we go. There's a lot of information to digest there. In summary, if you want to get the effect of altitude training without going to the mountains, I'm not sure the mask is the answer. Is it a complete write-off? Well, no, not necessarily. If you want to use this in your training, of course, feature it into your training plan, but it's just important to understand the gains and the benefits of using this, and it's not necessarily the same as altitude training. Also, this has opened my eyes up to RMT training, and perhaps it's a topic for another day. It sounds incredibly interesting. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. A lot of information there. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. Do give this video a like and don't forget to give GTN a follow over on social media and give us a little subscribe down below.